unless you are in tune to the life of grace and understand God's presence in your life, you don't have a reason to be modest. Like you would have no motivation. Okay, I, I can only go off of my own experience of how I came to have my own self-worth. And I, I would say that I picked it up because of my prayer life, because I immersed myself in the writings of the saints and how they how they viewed themselves as precious in God's eyes. And because I immersed myself in that, I began to pick up that way of thinking, you know, that how loved I am, how forgiven I am. I would have never been prepared for marriage, for dating, for anything, if I had not first developed a relationship with my first love, which is Christ. You know, I guess contemplation played its role in the fact that I would visit the Blessed Sacrament. I would place myself there. And when you see yourself in that light, you will never settle for anything less than absolute respect from someone. And so when I met my husband, it the way he treated me was the way, was with the reverence that I felt Christ treating me when I was in his presence. And so if, if it would not have been that way, it's like, no, I would have never married him. I, I would have never even considered having a relationship with him. Persons who are immodest in their, uh, their dress, etc., they're not very conscious of the fact that they are destined for marriage. People go to bars and clubs all the time looking for somebody to marry them, but you wouldn't go to a furniture store looking for a barbecue sandwich, so why would you go to a bar looking for a husband? You know, you, and so the guys that are looking at you when you're dressed like that aren't the guys that are going to treat you right. You know, the next time they see a girl that's dressed like that, they're going to just follow that girl. I think you should think about your vocation, and if you're looking at the married life and, you know, you're looking for a future spouse, would you want your husband to just marry you because of your body? Because when you get older, it gets wrinkly and saggy and gross, <laughs> and they're not going to want you anymore. They're going to go for the younger girls, and you're going to be left alone. But it's really important that you cover that part up, because my theology teacher, he says no one likes an unwrapped present. And that's like the beauty of marriage, is that when you get married, you get to unwrap your present. And it's beautiful because it's been wrapped and it's been saved that whole time. When two people come to marriage pretty innocently and then there is marriage, there is a big explosion <laughs> that takes place and there's a bonding that occurs. And I will say that it, it was years and years and years before my modesty attracted the attention that I was waiting for, but it was worth the wait. It was worth the wait because I have an amazing relationship with my husband that I wouldn't trade for anything. And I'm glad that when I hear girls tell all these stories about, oh, this guy, that, and oh, I dated him and it was horrible. I'm glad that I missed all that. You know, and hating guys and this and that. Oh, they, oh, all guys are jerks. Because I, I have to say, not all guys are jerks. And, you know, if, if you're modest, you, you will get to experience that. Is living modesty difficult? In today's society, it is. It 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 can be a cross, but it's not like it's not like something like oh I don't I don't want to you know have to deal with that. But once you really start to it starts to take effect in you, you want to dress modestly, and you don't care what's going against you. You just want to dress modestly, and at times it's difficult. At times you want to give up, but then you realize again, I can't give up. I am being a light to others around me, and I have to stay a light. I, I can't just burn out because then where's the world going to go? I've been chosen by God to dress modestly, and I need to spread that to others. Purity makes the heart grow stronger, whether you're destined for marriage or whether you're destined to be one of those who voluntarily renounce marriage for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Yeah reason why we do not have persons responding to God's call is the uh, ways in which they have become entangled with sexual sin. And therefore they can't hear, the, 
the come follow me words of our Lord. They, they are captives. Huh? Uh, and uh, so this would be another reason why it's important. For the sake of those who are going to be marrying, it's important for their future married life. For the sake of those who are being called to voluntarily renounce marriage for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it's important. the daily immodesty would lead to, to the like immodesty on the internet or oh, absolutely if you know you're daily lusting about the people that you can't get that you just see on the street you're gonna be like well you know why not take it a step further and why not see everything if people post themselves like in swimsuits or girls do post themselves in swimsuits on uh, the internet. I think that what they're doing is they're, they might be trying to impress people or they just might not know what they're doing is wrong because no one's told them the truth and they haven't heard it yet so they don't know what they're doing. Would you say that like their bikini pictures is like the poor man swimsuit illustrated issue or like this the, the Victoria's Secret for the guy who likes the girls next door? Yeah. Uh, it's the everyday Joes or it's the high school person's uh, tangible porn. Because, you know, you look at uh, the SI models or whatever, and you're like, well, you know, that's just a hopeless cop. I'm never going to meet her or get with her. But then you see one of your friends, and you're like, is that what she's like? Well, maybe if I, and then, oh, I can get that. The things completely change. It used to be that we were concerned about protecting, protecting adolescents from pornography. Now the adolescents are producing it. That's what 15-year-old girls are doing when they send photographs of themselves out like that. They know that they're posting their picture on the internet and that people are looking at it because why else would they post it? And, and, and people will say things like, ooh, yo, sexy, and things like that, right? The girls will say that. But what those teenage girls don't realize is that they're, they're definitely causing, that's definitely a grave, a grave situation. That's definitely a grave evil. That th there's no way that you're not going to stir up lust in a young man who's using the computer, not looking for it, but knowing the nature of the privacy of a computer, and there are the pictures, and there's many of them, and you can just flip through any ones you want, well, he's already, by, by, by looking and not turning away immediately, he's already going to be, you know, walking down the wrong path. So why do you put it up there? Why do you think they put it up there? So that people will say, yo, sexy. For the attention. But I, and, and they do it for the attention, but I don't think they realize that it's causing grave sin. If you know this now, if you know that you're causing men to lust, and especially by putting more than one picture, which is making it like look more. So a, a girl puts one picture up, the guy has to turn his eyes. If you know a guy has to turn his eyes, don't put the picture up. If you put more than one picture up, not only does the guy have to turn his eyes, you're inviting him to look more. If, if this is a situation and you don't take it down, don't go to communion because you're committing a grave sin. And when you die, and there is a God, we can know this from our human reason, and He is a just God, we know this from our human reason, and you've not repented of it, it's going to be two photos, three photos, that is going to keep, keep you in hell for eternity. So what do you do? You repent. Oh Lord, I didn't know. You delete it. Do you go to communion still? Yeah, you didn't know. Unless you did know, in that case, you go to confession. I would still mention it in confession. Just mention it to the Father. I didn't know. Nobody taught me. Nobody told me. I didn't realize that this was such a big problem with guys. I want to ask you how you view a modest girl. Is it time for that? You can ask me that. It's time for whatever you want. Okay. When you see a modest girl, when you see a, a, a girl dressed modestly, what do you think? What do you? What goes through your head? Your mind? I, I, I'll, I'll give you the extreme 
I'll give you the extreme. And then it will better help me explain what goes through my mind when I just see an average modest girl, like your typical everyday modest girl, which is not everyday. When I see a girl who's dressed modestly and she's irreverent, like prostrate on the ground before the Blessed Sacrament, and if she's wearing a veil, it, it, it's enough to make me cry. It's enough to make me cry thinking about it. Because what, what women have to realize is that beauty, real beauty, causes people to question their existence, the meaning of their life, in a very positive way. It's, no, it's enough to make me cry just thinking about it right now like on, on camera. That real beauty makes a man question his existence in a positive way. And so real beauty well, shows just how, how God God is, just, just how supreme, just how, how powerful, just how merciful, just how humble he is. And so when you see the most beautiful of all of God's creatures covered up, and then, and then in absolute humility before him. There's, no more, there's nothing more beautiful than that, than seeing God's most beautiful creature in reverence, in not just reverence, prostration, even with her hair covered before him. It, it, it's enough to make me cry because it's just so beautiful. And so when I see a, a person outside of that circumstance who's dressed modestly, I, and especially knowing that the world is against her. I think automatically, one, this girl's beautiful, even if I didn't even have time to think about the fact that the world's against her, that this, is, this, is, this person's beautiful. They know they're beautiful. They know what life's about. They know that they're special. They might or might not have the body that men are lusting over, but they know that that's not what's important that there's more to life than this like three minutes of fleeting pleasure. And so I, I, I'm, I'm in awe and, and my heart gets little butterflies and not in a bad way, in a way that, that makes me want to be more pure, that makes me want to be a better man. And it makes me, it, it reminds me of who, I'm, who I am and what I was created for. So you feel complete respect and reverence? I feel love. I love them. I love modest girls. They don't even have to they don't have to be I just love them. I love them because they're they're showing me God. They're helping me to be holy. They're helping me to be pure. They're reminding me of the meaning of my life. So I might see I might go through my day and see hundreds of immodest girls, which thank you Jesus that I don't. But what, 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 if you even see one immodest girl, that, that's an outward sign saying it's not true. There's nothing but this earthly life. This is what you want, this, this sexual pleasure, this uh, lust, come on. But when you see a modest girl, it reminds you, no, there's more to life than just temporal pleasures. And it's beautiful. I, there was a girl at my old school who was just like this. Like, when they realize how beautiful they are, then it starts showing. And it's just like, it's just a special factor. When they walk into the room, you're like, wow. It's not that they're like the most beautiful girl you've ever seen, but it's just that self-respect and confidence truly really shows. And it's easy to pick up on, and then it's easy to be attracted to because you're like, wow, she's, she's good, she's wholesome, she's not worried about what other people think, she's modest and she's holy, really holy. So it's a lot easier for you to respect that. Every day you walk out the door dressed modestly, you have an impact on others around you and you probably don't know it and they probably, they might make fun of you for it, but it's because that's their insecurity talking and it's not their hearts because our hearts are, we're made to want happiness and want good and when we know good, we see it. So good wouldn't criticize good, but bad would so it's I think it's other girls insecurity if you get criticized for it I think it's their insecurity that's talking it's not their hearts because you have an impact on every single person who sees you